Welcome to the 2021 Honda CB500X. This bike is for the free spirited, those who want to conquer the urban jungle. With its powerful twin cylinder engine and long travel suspension, it was built for your adventures. The CB500X has a tough look that screams adventure. Inspired by the legendary Africa Twin and with updated graphics, it blends rugged lines with an aggressive stance and a tall screen offers amazing rider comfort on the open road. A powerful all-round performer, the CB500X features a twin cylinder engine if you need to explore any type of road. Powerful, agile and efficient on longer journeys, it gives you the freedom you've been dreaming of and just like its larger siblings, an assisted slipper clutch eases upshifts and manages the rear wheel lockup on hard down changes. So here we go, this is the riding review of the brand new 2021 Honda CB500X. We're at Glorious Goodwood in the Sussex countryside. So here we go, let's, uh, let's jump on it, take it for a first impressions ride. I'll let you know exactly what I think. Honda have designed the CB500X to come with a liquid cooled four stroke double overhead cam parallel twin engine with a displacement of 471cc. It has an electric starter. The torque on this bike is 43 newton meters, peaking at 6,500 RPM. With a power output of 35 kilowatts or 46.9 brake horsepower, peaking at 8,600 RPM. The seat height on the CB500X comes in at 830mm with a wheelbase of 1445mm and a nice ground clearance of 180mm. The fuel capacity on this bike is 17.7 litres. It comes from Honda with on and off road tyre patterns. The front brake is a 310mm by 5mm disc with a two piston caliper. The rear brake is a 240mm by 5mm disc with a single piston caliper. The curb weight of this bike is 197 kilograms. The front suspension is a telescopic fork, 41 mm with a preload adjustable. The rear suspension is a ProLink Mono 5 stage preload adjuster. This comes with a steel square pipe swing arm. The front and rear wheels are multi spoke made out of cast aluminium. The transmission on the Honda is a 6 speed manual gearbox with a chain drive. The bike is relatively tall, uh, completely on my tiptoes at the moment. Starts nice and easy, it's a very, very basic bike. Let's just get out into the sunshine a little bit. Right, so it is a very, very basic bike. You've got your engine start, engine stop, your hazards, your horn, your indicators, your high, low beam, and your pass light. Not much more you can say about it, really. Same display as most of the smaller CB bikes that Honda do in their range. Let's go through the uh, world famous tunnel at Goodwood. It's quite a quiet day at Goodwood today. There's not much going on. Now one of the first things I find when you ride this bike is it is a tall bike but it's a small engine. Alright so I'll take this across the South Downs get a good feel for what the, the seating position on this bike is really really comfortable I've, I've done about 60 miles on it so far I've not had any issues whatsoever with the comfort of the seat the leg position is really really nice they're almost at a right angle straight down which they are kicked back slightly but the majority of the time the leg position is very nice the hands are nice and wide on this bike they're back slightly, so you're not leaning forward on the bike, which again is another bonus if you do want a nice upright style adventure bike. That windscreen, it is very small. However, that said, it is fantastic. It literally keeps all the wind off of you. 
it's, it's absolutely brilliant great design there by Honda I've taken this on the motorway and again you don't get any more wind than you would do on a bike with a big windscreen it's it's really really well designed the wing mirrors they're fantastic the visibility you get in, out of them is second to none they're up nice and high you haven't even got to bring your arms or your elbows in at all you don't get much vibrations from them either which is a bonus as well now this bike comes in at 46.9 brake horsepower it isn't a lot I believe it's an A2 compliant motorcycle as well but for what it is it works really well it doesn't hang around it's not going to set the world on fire it is only 46.9 horsepower it's got more than enough power to get you going now this bike redlines just over 8,000 rpm so it's quite a low revving bike but it's a low a low powered engine so it doesn't need to rev very high got a nice smooth gearbox not any issues with this gearbox with any false neutrals any sticky gears it's always gone in really really well the handling as well is awesome it's just so smooth and for a very upright bike it is very very precise you roll on the power as you come out of a corner and it all puts it down nicely now from the rider's cockpit point of view it's, it's all set out very very basic but very very informative looking down I can see crystal clear I'm in fourth gear I've got my revs to the far left of that display just to the right I've got my fuel gauge smack bang right centre is your speedo that's your important part that's what you need to be uh, seeing without any issues top of that you got your time far right hand side you got your engine temperature bottom right hand corner you got your modometer and your trips so again like i was saying honda have used this display on quite a few of their bikes Just roll on at 30. now when you pull away it is quite flat it doesn't have a lot of character however you do need to keep in mind that this is only a 500 cc motorcycle with just under 47 brake horsepower it is not a big powerful motorcycle so therefore i think it does well for what it is now honda have put this bike on uh, semi-road off-road tires and that is where i think this bike will excel really well you take it on the loose ground a bit of bit of dirt this bike will do really really well it's very light it's light to maneuver it's light to ride so i don't think you're going to have any issues taking it off road and if you do unfortunately drop it you're not going to have many problems picking it back up now with your back you're in a nice upright position so i don't think you're going to get tired on this bike right 28 miles an hour into the national bit of lag there third gear pull away but when it picks up in the revs it then starts pulling nicely the suspension is absolutely brilliant I've had quite a few bumps and it's not caused me any issues it's soaked them up really well now you've got six gears on this motorbike which is always a bonus we don't like five geared motorbikes so it's going to give you good fuel economy and tipping in the handling is really really good even on these tires like i said they are semi-road off-road tires but the bike still grips quite nicely to the road this is a bike that is inspiring confidence gives you good feedback as a rider now this windscreen is adjustable however you can't adjust it whilst you're riding there's a couple of bolts either side that you're going to have to undo and you can just move it up and move it down I believe at the moment this windscreen is in its lowest position so if you were to take it up higher it's probably going to give you even better wind protection but that said I have noticed when you take motorcycle windscreens up it tends to cause a bit of buffeting so where it is at the moment is really really good
Now with the seat, you've got a nice little support step at the back as it steps up into the pillion area. I've just scooted back a little bit, put my backside right up against that. I'm leaning forward slightly and it does give you a nice, slightly aggressive riding position. Now the big question is, could you take this bike on a long distance ride? Definitely. It's got the comfort that you need for a long distance ride. It also has enough power to get you going. It's got good overtaking power. No doubt you'll be able to get some uh, luggage for this bike, get some soft panniers, maybe put a top box on the back. So I think, yeah, if you were to take this bike touring, you'd, you'd have a good bike. You're definitely gonna be able to go off-roading if you get a bit of a gravity road. And I think Honda have actually kind of modeled this bike on the Honda Africa Twin. It's a baby version for those riders who do not want the big, massive Africa Twin, but still want the, uh, the style. The headlight flasher is nice and easy to locate on your index finger where the majority of them are. The clutch is very, very light. Now, that's a good thing. You do not want a heavy clutch. It's non-adjustable on the lever. However, it feels ever so slightly too light. I would like some more substance in it. It just, it does have a cheap feel to it. But you're not gonna get tired if you're operating it in uh, heavy traffic. The brake, however, the brake front brake lever is adjustable and this brake is really really comfortable you pull that front lever and the bike just nose dives it is brilliant so i do like this bike i do rate it quite high there's a few things i would change on it like i said the clutch i'd probably put a little bit more weight behind it it doesn't need more power it's a 500 cc I think if you think it needs more power you need to get a different motorcycle another thing i have noticed which is a slight negative about this bike is there is a lot of vibration coming through the handlebars now i keep getting a numb hand and i haven't ridden this bike long at all so potentially on a long distance ride it might cause a bit of an issue with your your right hand I don't know if that's something that might get a bit easier in time the more you own this bike and the more you ride it but that is something I've noticed quite quickly my right hand is suffering now I love this bit of road it is really nice alpine -y. it's part of uh, what I would call the British Black Forest if you've ever ridden the Black Forest you'll know what I'm on about awesome stretch of road in Germany now it is a bit nicer when you can get a little bit more speed up because this is national and I haven't got above 50 for quite some time and now we're down low so yeah you can have some nice rides on this road now, I believe this bike comes in at just over £6,000 is it a good bargain for £6,000? well that all depends what are you looking for out of this motorcycle? are you looking for a a low cc light adventure bike if you are and the answer is yes then i think six thousand pound is a brilliant price the ride height again being a tall motorcycle is really really good you get great visibility over what's in front of you so you're not low down struggling to see you are up high planning the route ahead great great setup there this last section of this road is phenomenal absolutely brilliant nice sweeping bends oh it's beautiful i love this road so up at speed on this bike 60 miles an hour leaning forward ever so slightly you don't get there's no wind in my chest this windscreen is fantastic 
I do like the design of this bike. I think it looks really good. And back at Goodwood, there's a Ducati next to it. And they didn't look all that dissimilar. So Honda, in regards to the styling of this bike, have really done well. It looks like a premium motorcycle. You can maneuver your body around the bike enough to make it slightly aggressive or completely bolt up right like this. So if you are looking for a nice, comfortable riding position or slightly forward sporty, this bike will suit you very, very well. When I first picked this bike up from Honda, I was a bit dubious about it. It felt narrow, and it is a narrow bike. My legs are almost completely closed while they feel it. But the more I'm riding this bike, the more I'm gelling with it. And the more I'm actually finding it a great, great bit of kit. And that said, I, I wouldn't buy this bike. It doesn't have enough power for me. It doesn't have enough comfortable power. Now that isn't about going flat out. That is just about effortless riding. Obviously, as you know, I've got the Kawasaki Vulcan comes in at about 60 horsepower so you're looking at about 14 brake horsepower roughly more than this Honda and it is so noticeable that difference in power it's not a lot but my gosh does it make a difference however I think if Honda could squeeze 70 horsepower out of this motorcycle this has the potential to be one of the best lower end adventure motorcycles on the market for a budget it's light it's skinny you can filter through traffic really really well you've got great visibility you've got ride comfort you've got the potential to take luggage a great seating position it just lacks that grunt but like I just said if it's the extra grunt you're after, you're not going to go for this motorcycle. Right, so now we're going to see how this bike handles on this section of the road. This is a really good twisty, windy road. Tilts in nicely this way, yep. Flicks over again really well. Open it up on the straight. A sharp left here. Drop it down a gear. Drop it down another gear. Trail break it in. There we go. Rolling it on out. This right here is very, very tight. So I'm going to scrub off all the power on the bike. Just cruise it on round. Push on out. Now, this is a good thing about a smaller powered bike. You can really open them up, have some great riding days, do some great roads like this. And when you glance down, you haven't broken the speed limit. You haven't even got really close to it because it does not accelerate so quick like a sports bike and a big powered bike. And that is the fun thing about a smaller engine bike. They handle really well and you can have fun getting to the speed limit because it takes you just that little bit longer to get there. Thank you for watching this edition of Rev Solutions. Please hit that subscribe button, press the bell for notifications and give us a big thumbs up. Until next time, ride safe and we'll see you soon.